The premise of the movie is set far in the future. Humankind, as a race, is evolving at its own pace when one discovery changes everything. A massive fireball similar to the sun is approaching the Earth at high speed. Time passes and soon enough, the Earth faces the effects of having two suns. Heat, radiation, and unnatural gravitational pull kill billions and put human life at risk. The second sun will take about 200 years to gradually fly away from the solar system, and by then, humankind will be long extinct. To avoid the worst case scenario, a group of survivors build a self-sustaining underground city called Ember. Its resources and food supply are predicted to last for 200 years, after which humans will be allowed to return to the surface. However, they can only do so using a very specific path that can be accessed only by using a map. The path is kept a secret to avoid curious people exploring it before the time comes. Meanwhile, the map and the instructions are kept in a locker, timed at 200 years. The very first mayor of Ember gets to keep the box, and as time goes by, it is handed down from mayor to mayor. Everything goes according to plan until one day, the current mayor dies and the safe is forgotten about. Just like that, 200 years pass and the box opens on its own, but no one pays attention to its contents and it remains unused inside a closet. The Ember City is powered by a singular generator that is on the verge of breaking down. Moreover, the canned food supply, which is kept in the treasury, is also running out at a frightening rate. Then, we are introduced to the city's social and work environment. After graduating high school, every youngster is assigned to a job based on a random draw. Some get to be the mailman, others get to work the food, while the luckiest ones get to become YouTube narrators. <laughs> Just kidding, they're kept in charge of the generator. Likewise, the next graduating class has an ambitious young man named Dune. He has always been interested in machines, following in his father's footsteps, who is a famous mechanic. Dune eagerly wants to be designated to repair the generator, but his dreams are crushed when he is made the mailman of the city. What a nerd. He is best friends with a girl named Lena, who is assigned to be the city pipe handler. <laughs> okay. Since it was her childhood dream to become a mailman, Dune secretly allows her to change professions with him. This way, he gets to be close to the generator, because the city pipelines are laid around the same area. At night, Lena excitedly tells her grandmother about her profession. The old woman knows something about the secret passageway, but she has dementia and has forgotten most of it. Lena's late father also had an idea about the exit path, which has proven true through his final voice message that they listened to in his memory. He has described the outside world very vaguely in the voice message, hence the girls think of it as gibberish. Someone named Barrow is also mentioned at one point, but no one of such name resides in the city, therefore the girls never thought anything of it. The following day is Lena's first day at work. She happily distributes letters until a loud commotion is heard. A homeless man is being apprehended for spreading false rumors because he claims to have seen giant insects in the dark side of the city where no one is allowed to go. No one believes him, but Lena finds a body part that the man dropped, which looks too much like a giant beetle horn. Elsewhere, Dune also reports on the first day of his job and instantly notices the rusty pipes and broken spare parts. His boss is a grumpy old man named Sul, who has been in this line of work his entire life. He knows everything about the city's pipelines and is well aware that it is at risk of being flooded. Sul wants Dune to refrain from using his brain because the city workers have tried everything Thing and given up on finding a permanent fix to the problems. Dune is handed the helmet of a dead worker before he is put to work. He keeps the mentor's words in mind but is adamant about looking for a solution, refusing to let his people die in a flood. Later that day, he steals the pipeline map from Saul and starts exploring the tunnels. He eventually comes across a room named 351. It piques his interest because the room is not on the map and is locked. Dune decides to ignore it for now and continues the exploration to reach another dark and mysterious tunnel. No one knows what it leads to and it is too scary to explore. Walking further, Dune ends up inside the city's food storage unit, which is almost empty. While looking around, he is caught by the 
the food guard, Looper. No one in the city likes him because he was previously accused of stealing cans of food, but wasn't convicted. If I were Looper, I'd be sneaking bites too. Then, suddenly, the generator stops working, leaving the city in complete darkness. The engineers do their best to fix it temporarily, but everyone knows it won't work for a long time. After work that night, Lena goes home to her frantic grandmother, telling her about a box in the closet. It turns out that her great-grandfather was the mayor, who died without passing the safe down. She finally checks the closet to find the years-old safe, but doesn't know what to do with it. The next day at work, Lena meets Looper, the infamous guard of the food storage unit. He gives her a letter to hand over to the current mayor. At the mayor's mansion, Lena sees a drawer full of cans and notices the mayor trying to hide it. Her eyes also land on a picture of her great-grandfather, where he is holding the box she found in the closet. Meanwhile, people are starting to suffer from the first stage of food and medicine shortage. They are preparing themselves for the inevitable big blackout. Lena shows Dune the beetle horn she found yesterday, and Dune confirms with the textbooks to ensure it is authentic. Dune's father is an expert in such things, but has no answer to how a beetle can be so big. Moreover, he wants his son to stop being curious about the things outside the city. After the failed meeting with his father, Lena shows Dune the contents of the safe. It has a shiny glass plate, a torn piece of paper, and a bunch of strange markings. They put together the torn page and discover it has the instructions for the way out of the city. It tells them to use the locked door 351 to find the said passage. The duo sneaks into the tunnels to investigate further, but is caught by a limping man. He runs away as soon as he sees them and drops many food cans on the way. Dune is shocked because the cans are of a food that the city ran out of a long time ago. Before they investigate further, a gigantic star-nosed mole attacks them and they have to escape through the tunnels. When things calm down a little, Lena notices her father's name written on Dune's helmet, meaning he was the worker who died wearing it. Dune reveals that he drowned while working in the pipelines. Later, Lena returns home and asks her Aunt Lane about her father's death. Lane discloses that her father was obsessed with finding a way out of the city and had discovered the shortest path. However, he drowned while on the final part of the mission. Lena is shocked by how tragic her father's death was. She is distracted by her thoughts when she notices Looper limping down the street. It reminds her of the person in the tunnels and she quickly goes to tell Dune. The two then finally open the door to room 351 and find it filled with food supplies that the mayor has collected for himself. It is more than enough to last him a lifetime while his people die of starvation. Sounds familiar. The duo does not wake up the sleeping mayor and returns to Lisa's house. They listen to her father's recording again and this time, Dune recognizes the person Barrow mentioned in the message as his father. He runs to the old man and inquires about the tunnels and Lena's father. It is revealed that Barrow and Lena's father were partners on a mission to find an exit. They were never successful and Barrow's close friends lost lost their lives because of their obsessions with looking for an exit. Therefore, he didn't want to tell Dune about the mission, not wanting his son to go down the same path. Best if his son just dies instead. Dune understands his father's concerns, but is adamant about completing the task that they started. Moreover, he has the help of the map and the box, unlike they did in the past. Elsewhere, Lena tries to expose the mayor, but is caught. The lights go off at the right time, giving her a chance to steal the mayor's batch and run away. She and Dune are on the list of wanted criminals and have nowhere to go. In such a situation, they use a special vehicle to run to the generator room. Then, they join the stolen mayor batch and the glass they found in the box to create a key with the symbol of the generator on it. They think it is the key to the room, but are wrong. Lena inspects the instructions and discovers that they have to look behind the locker for something. Upon checking, they reveal a secret chamber behind one of the lockers that consists of several more empty lockers. The use for these is unknown, but the next instruction asks them to move a wheel clockwise. As soon as they do so, the lockers line up and slide into the generator room. Even a baby could have solved that riddle. The door to the room finally opens, and they come face to face with a subterranean river connected to a massive piece of machinery. The locker is not actually used to hold things, but was made as a boat to transfer humans to the surface. However, to make it work, they still have to raise the water level above a massive wheel, stopping the river's path. They go through the next instruction, 
which asks them to enter the emergency control room. The badge finally comes to use as the key, and they go into the chamber that has levers and buttons to control the entire machine. They activate the wheel as the instruction asks them, which causes the water level to rise slowly. However, the plan backfires when the sudden surge of pressure causes the lights in the city to glow brighter and eventually break. The people are even more scared when the pipelines break, putting the city at risk of being flooded. The mayor thinks this is the end and goes to his waterproof chamber to save his life. But karma catches up to him when he is attacked by a giant mole and killed before everyone else. Suddenly, the wheel stops working, and the pipeline worker, Saul, comes to save the day. He fixes the wheel, but has to keep on holding a lever for it to continue working. It is an extremely dangerous task, but he recognizes that it is the only way people's lives can be saved. The water level rises immediately after the wheel is fixed, and Dune has to reluctantly leave Saul to look for an exit. After that, Dune, Lena, and her little sister sit on the locker boat, and a massive wave pushes them above and away from the wheel. The three go down a series of dark and scary tunnels, hoping to be alive when everything is over. They almost give up when they slide down a steep slope, but when they open their eyes again, they find themselves in a pond. A few meters away is a bright door, which finally leads them to the surface of the Earth. The duo is not as happy as they should be, because it is nighttime, and they assume the outside is just as dark as the inside. But then, they witness their first sunrise, and their eyes go blind. I mean, sparkle with joy. The land is inhabitable again, and they can finally live a fulfilled life. Suddenly, the group notices a bird and follows it to reach a very deep hole. They can see a hint of Ember City from this height, but their voice doesn't reach down below. As a last resort, they tie the map and their messages to a rock and throw it inside. Fortunately, Dune's father receives the message, and the entirety of the city is saved. How will they get out though? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.